So our main points today are going to be to first of all, compare and contrast the difference between the overlay and the underlay. And then as part of that, uh, we'll also talk about how the overlay actually gets established in different scenarios. And then finally, we'll talk briefly about the routing interaction between the, road, the overlay and underlay. So with that, we will dive right in. So for starters, uh, we'll just describe it first, what is the overlay versus the underlay? So the underlay is really just something that we use to describe any of the traditional networks that our user traffic is gonna ride. So that could be land side connections that connect on the inside of an edge, uh, or that could also refer to the underlying WAN carriers that we're establishing connectivity over. Uh, so that really makes up the underlay and it effectively just becomes transport. Now the overlay on the other hand is gonna be a series of tunnels that we establish across the underlay, uh, specifically on the WAN so that we can abstract those underlying transports and use that as our logical connectivity for the actual user traffic that we're forwarding. So a few things to know about how we actually establish that overlay. So first of all, there are two main types of overlay tunnels that the edge will establish between each other. Uh, first one is a public tunnel. So that's gonna refer effectively to any tunnel that is established over the internet. And that is somewhat unique in the sense that we know that internet in general is going to have any to any connectivity. So for example, if I have two internet connections uh, on each of these edges, I can reasonably assume that my connections will be able to talk to all the other connections, meaning that this bottom connection will be able to talk to both connections on the other edge, as well as the top connection. So realistically, in a scenario where I've got two internet connections on each side, uh, as is noted here in number two, I'll establish a full mesh by actually creating four different tunnels to satisfy all different combinations of connectivity that I'll have there. Um, whereas on a private network within MPLS, for example, uh, you know, in general, we'll only have one on each edge. So usually that's just gonna be a one-to-one -one mapping of, uh, of tunnels between two edges for an MPLS connection. Now, the reason we do that obviously is because the edges need to be smart enough when they're nailing up their tunnels between each other to know that I can't as an edge necessarily try to establish a tunnel from my internet interface over to the MPLS interface on another edge. So we ensure that the edges are not creating suboptimal tunnels in that sense by having this delineation between the two. Now, along those same lines, uh, we also have under the advanced settings for the WAN overlay, the ability to delineate between multiple private connections as well. So for situations where you might have multiple MPLS providers, as we've illustrated here, we run into the same issue where the edge needs to be aware that it can't necessarily talk to one uh, MPLS interface from an MPLS interface on the other provider's network like this. That obviously won't work and again will result in suboptimal routing. So what we do is just give a private network name to each connection to say that MPLS 1 and MPLS 2 are separate networks so that the edges know that even though these are both private WAN interfaces that they can't necessarily talk to one another. So that's effectively at a, at a very high level how we establish the overlay. So uh, just to round things out, we'll talk briefly about how routing works in these scenarios. So uh, the overlay, as you would expect, really is creating this logical separate network from anything that's going on into the underlay. And that also results in the need to redistribute routes and communicate routing between those two. Uh, so for starters, for the underlay, you know, whether, again, we're talking about uh, land side uh, routing, so the routing protocols that we would run, for example, with a layer three core switch, that lives in a branch or just connected routes on the edge, uh, as well as the underlay in the sense of talking to traditional non-SD-WAN sites via an MPLS network where we need to exchange prefixes there, uh, is all gonna be using traditional routing methods, whether that's static routing or OSPF or BGP in order to communicate prefixes back and forth between those devices. Uh, whereas in the overlay, uh, we actually handle a lot of the intelligence there within the, uh, the control plane of our solution. Um, but if you need to tweak that, you actually do that in the orchestrator via overlay flow control. And as you can kind of glean from the graphic that we've included in here, uh, really the only things that you're telling overlay flow control is the types of routes that you want to have redistributed back into the overlay. So, uh, you know, reasons why we might do that get a bit more advanced than we're going to cover in this session, but just know that that's where we would control, uh, you know, any kind of updates to the routing behavior of the overlay. So uh, as a final note, just ensure again that like anytime you're doing route redistribution between different networks like this, care must be taken to avoid inadvertently creating routing loops uh, or more likely causing a site to become transit that you don't necessarily want it to 
between the overlay and underlay. So uh, in the uh, future courses, we'll also be talking about some of the mechanisms that we have in place to do that. Um, so, but in the meantime, just be aware that this isn't something that you just want to flick on and forget about. So you know, take some thought into, uh, into the process when you're uh, actually implementing this in a POC. Uh, so again, just to recap quickly, um, you know, the overlay itself really just refers to that network of tunnels that we establish amongst the edges um, and, you know, really is intended to kind of hide some of the inner workings and complexities that go along with the underlays that it rides. Um, you know, the tunnels, again, uh, you know, we've got the two main types, public and private, and, uh, and just understand that, uh, you know, the public will try to establish connections and we want it to establish connections to all other public links, whereas there are some limitations around private just to accommodate the fact that you don't have cross reachability between MPLS and the internet necessarily, or between MPLS providers. Uh, and finally, we look briefly at the routing that we do both with the underlay and overlay and how we interact between those two and, uh, and just again, be careful when you do that.